So thanks Beth for asking how I set up my PayPal buttons. And I'm gonna go and share my screen and show you all here. So I've logged into my PayPal account. Obviously uh, when you log in, it'll look something similar to this and then click on pay at the top and then um, pay and get paid and then click on PayPal buttons down here on the bottom left. Um, now you could do that or what I usually do is I just go directly go to paypal.com slash buttons. That works too. Um, you know, once you log in. And then once I'm in here, I usually just go and click on view save buttons and then duplicate one, but I'll just show you from, from scratch how I create them. Now I've, I've tried these smart, so-called smart new buttons, smart subscribe. And I, I, um, maybe I'm just old school. I didn't like them because they, they seem more complicated to set up. So I still use the buy now button for a single purchase. So like an online course, uh, if I'm selling it, or I, I, I use the subscribe button for um, a you know, an ongoing payment like you know, MasterHard or something like that. So I'll just show you the buy now button. I click on it to start creating it. And then, um, so let me just make the screen a little bigger here. Item name, you know, XYZ online course with George Cow, um, price 20. By the way, so, uh, when, I, when I do pre-launch, price, you know, my pre-launch price is usually $90 at this point. I'll just name it pre-launch. Um, so when the sales come in, it'll, it'll have that name. I'll have that in, in, the, in the name of the product. And then when I'm ready for launch again, I'll come into my saved buttons and I'll edit the price on this one to be 120. That's all I do. So it's the same, same code, same link. It's just when they go there after the pre-launch is over, they see a different price. So um, anyway, so uh, I basically ignore these things. I used to go fancy and do options one, two, three, but it just, uh, you know, I, I prefer to have separate buttons now if I'm gonna do different options rather than using these. So I ignore those. Um, yeah, anyway, I, I just ignore everything here. I ignore these because I'll tell you why later. So uh, you can, you can, um, you could choose if it's if it's going to be embedded on your website. You could choose to display the credit card logos or not. I think by default it's displaying the credit card logos, which I think is a good idea anyway because people can see. Oh, it takes credit card. Um, I don't know what the use smaller button means. Oh, just a little slightly smaller. It's kind of and you can actually select the button so you can say pay now or buy now. It's I wish they had more options, but those are the only two options. Um, or oh, I'm sorry, there is a third option: use your own button image. So you could find or design some button that says, you know, pay with love, <laughs> something like that, you know, buy with your heart <laughs> and, then, and then use that button when they click on it, it'll, it'll still go into the PayPal. So that's, that's kind of a neat, neat feature. Um, but again, I usually use the dis, you know, display credit card logos. And then I skip the shipping. I skip the tax. Um, I guess maybe in certain locations that's needed for sales tax collection. So some of you can, can do that. Uh, use my secure, secure merchant account ID. You know, I never really understood this. I, I just always choose this. I guess maybe my secure merchant account ID is my email address. You can actually tell me when you buy something from me next time what it says at the, on the top left. But that's what, it, that's what it says. On the top left, it'll say, you know, George Cow Inc. or whatever, whatever it is. I, 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 don't, I forget. Or you could use your primary email address. That's, that's up to you. Um, I skip step two, uh, except I do save the button. Save the button just means I can go back and edit the button later, which is very useful. So I definitely rec recommend keeping that checked. I don't do this inventory profit loss thing. Um, I, and then at step three, what I do is I, I don't like customers change quantities because, well, unless for some reason you need to, but again, that's co that complicates the, sh the checkout process. The key is the simpler your checkout process, the more likely people check out. <laughs> <laughs> and like get to the end of the checkout process. So please keep everything simple, everyone. I do, I, I click no, don't let customers add special instructions to me. If they want to contact me, they'll contact me. I don't need their shipping address. Okay, this is also very important, guys. I do not need shipping address. Click no. I said, well, what if I want to send them a nice card at some point? Do collect the shipping address, collect their mailing address some other way. Don't do it during the checkout process. It complicates things, okay? No, no shipping address, all right? And then finally, this is optional to say, take customers when they cancel their checkout. 
Um, sometimes they do, and I think I might have a cancel page. I don't remember, but I, I usually leave that alone. And then, but I do, this is important. Take customers when they finish checkout. This is important because I have a separate thank you page on my website, hidden. I have a separate hidden thank you page for every course that, that people buy. This allows me to, to track the conversions with Facebook Pixel, with Google Analytics, any, any other analytics I want. Because basically, like Beth, if you buy a course, you land, after you check out through PayPal, you land on a certain page and it says, hey, thanks so much for buying you know, this course. You know, check your, check your, check your, um, you know, check your PayPal. Let me, let me see. I, I can show you uh, a, current, a current thank you page that I have. Um, basically, it says check your email for, uh, you know, I sent the course access to your PayPal email, uh, you know, email address. Um, okay, let's see if I can find this uh, recent one here. Yeah, this one. Okay. So yeah, say so thank you. The info has been sent to your email address associated with your PayPal account. Anyway, I, you could pause the recording if you want to copy and paste this. Or, or and then I embed a Google form uh, for the intake to kind of ask them, hey, how'd you how'd you hear about me? Helps my marketing tons. You know, it also helps my affiliate program tons by knowing how they heard. Oh, I heard from my friend Beth. Oh, great, thank you. And then I do the affiliate credit. You know. Um, Okay, and then uh, so that's the that's the thank you page, the checkout page. Uh, thank you, uh, finish checkout page. And then I click create button. So let me go ahead and try this now. Click create button. Oh, I didn't I didn't put a uh, link in. Oh, I guess it went through anyway. That's that's surprising. Okay, so this is really important. Also, there are two tabs. People often don't realize this. The email tab. If you click on the email tab, it gives you a link that you can send to people on email, direct messaging, text messaging. Put, put on a website, uh, just, a, just a link, it's a link. You know, you can literally, I'm gonna, I'm gonna um, paste the link in the chat below. That's the link you can send someone in any way you want. And that link goes to, and I will show you on an incognito screen uh, because I can't be logged into my own PayPal account when I go to that link. So if I go to that link, right? If I just copy and paste that link into, into the browser, it will, uh, it will go to, you know, pay with PayPal, $90. I really wish they gave us the product name here, but they don't. I know it's kind of a bummer. Um, and sorry, I, I just shrunk my screen. So this is usually what it looks like. So it kind of starts with, you know, people have to put in their email address or they can click on pay with debit or credit card. Anyway, it's not the most pleasant checkout experience. I mean, it's not the most clear checkout experience, but guess what? It's built me a six figure business. It's worked for me for you know, 12 plus years. So everyone knows PayPal. I don't think anyone's, anyone's complaining about the fact that there's no product name. Sure, I'm sure it turns off a few people, maybe, but anyway, whatever. I'm, that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's fine for me. So that's the email. That's the, the email tab gets you the link. The website tab gets you the code that you simply copy and paste. You just click the code once and then, or click select code and then do the copy on your keyboard by doing command C keyboard shortcut or on windows it's control c and that copies it and then you go back uh, or do you go to your website and you paste the paste the link you paste the uh the the code in as an html code and then it shows up yeah any questions about uh about this from any of you yeah yeah mm -hmm. the 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 taking the customer to the url is what i was having trouble with um and i had worked out this whole funny little thing uh for people to be able to stay on my page and get a password and then be taken to, oh, they could, okay. they can open up my course page, but I knew that wasn't what you were doing. No. Yeah. And I thought, and so, no, what George is doing is much more elegant. Right. But I wanted to point out that you can customize this, code. this buyer's view. If you go back one. Okay. Oh, sorry. Oh, oh no, sorry. It, it looked like you could mess I'm, with the code. I'm going to go to, bit. I'm going to show you. So what I usually do, paypal.com slash buttons. Right. Um, uh, I usually go to view saved buttons because I've created so many buttons. Like once you create several, and by the way, the subscribe button, I should show you all here. The subscribe button uh, is a similar idea, except that here it's like um, Master Heart, you know, Master Heart 2022. Uh, and then um, billing amount each cycle, you know, $150 a month. Uh, how many cycles, after how many cycles should it be stopped? 12 cycles because it's a 12 month program, 12 payments basically. So that's the, 
that's all you do for, for subscriptions. And if you want to offer a trial period, uh, you can you can do that here. Um, I don't usually do that, but that's an option. You can even offer a second trial period. It's really weird. Anyway, it's pretty cool. Um, I, I have never tried that before. But after that, everything else is the same. You know, thank you page. I don't need their shipping address. Uh, send them to a thank you page, things like that. But you were saying advanced variables. Is that what you were talking about? Yeah, I, I, I actually haven't looked into this. So you're right, you can get fancy with this. I, I just, I'm sure there's cool stuff you can do with PayPal buttons. Just to add the name of the product, did I? So I was thinking that would be a doable. Oh, one. you can? Did you, is that I'm true? I'm guessing that you can. I would want to play around with it. But yeah, maybe. That might be the place that you could do it. But I think PayPal more. should be listening and they should do what you're saying. I think that's a good idea. Yeah, they should make it more user friendly. I mean, literally, you could see that this interface is like from the 90s. I mean, this, this, is, this is a really old school. Uh, PayPal buttons are so old school. But, but, um, but you know, I, I said earlier that I haven't, really, I haven't really given an honest try to the new buttons. So the new, the new smart buy button, sell on social, smart subscribe, you know, smart buttons. Um, this is probably, you know, item description. You know, I, I think I tried it once and I got really confused. Like, for example, I can't get a single link. That's why I was confused. I'm like, I don't, I want to copy code. I want to just get a single link to email somebody. I, how do I do that? I can't. This is what I was using. This smart button, and it's not it's, as customizable. It's not as, as smart as I, as I like it to it's be. It's not as smart. Yeah, it's it's not smart. So that's the, that's it dumbs the, that's us the down. Right. So the buy now button and the subscribe buttons are the only ones I use. So like I said, if I if I already created a button in the past, I just want to create another button similar to the ones I've created before. I click on, you know, I go to paypal.com slash buttons, log in. I click on view save buttons. And then uh, once I go to, sorry, your last action can be completed. Okay, this is this is weird. Um, doesn't usually happen this way. Let me let me go let me go through the direct channel. So I make sure I'm logged into PayPal. Okay. I click on pay slash get paid. Whoops. And then click on PayPal buttons down here. And then click on view. I have to wait for this developer bar to show up. It's really weird. It like it sometimes takes a few seconds. And once that shows up, I click on view your safe buttons. And then wow, that's something going on. There's something weird. Something really weird is happening. I think here. it's because you started something when we were talking. I think maybe. I started something. Yeah, yeah. So and I think I might confused. have. I might. Just... I might need to log out. Let me log out again. Let me log back in. Huh? So this is this is good practice for our, so that everyone knows that this kind of stuff does happen. Yeah. Sometimes logging out and back in is needed. So let me try this one more time here. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. You save buttons. Hopefully, it works this time. It's it's a cookie issue. There we go. It works this time. Mm -hmm. So once you get to the save buttons, you can click on um, the drop down menu on the left to send see more information. So for example, um, you know, uh, oh, I can see all the information here. But let's say I was zoomed in more. Oh, I still can see all. Sometimes my product names are so long, I have to click on this to see more info. But certainly, if you click on the drop down on the left, it shows you the price. Okay, and shows you when it was created. Um, and then you can click on the action button next to each one and click view code, basically get the code again or to view the link. That's what view code means, get the link or view the website code. <laughs> you can also create similar button. Mm -hmm. So if I click on create similar button, it populates everything uh, except now I can edit it as a new button. So it's like instead of X, Y, Z, I'll do A, B, C online course, blah, blah, blah. And everything's the same. So that's why you got to go to step three and make sure you edit edit the uh, checkout uh, URL to be different because a different product now, and then click on create button and uh, everything else is the same. Any other questions about PayPal buttons? Yeah, good. Angie. Question, George, just um, about the, the payment. I do an early bird fee yes. and mm -hmm. I never thought of just calling it early bird rate. So yeah, when early, people early look bird, at yeah. the page, I thought they should see the full price and then read to find out that there's a lower price because I was afraid someone would come back the next day and see that the price had gone up. So is this how you usually do? Like, do you ever post the original and then, cause we were doing this complicated thing where we yeah. put a coupon in the description and then oh, wow. put the coupon yeah. in and get the early bird rate. Yeah. Um, so for example, here's what I would do. Here's what I do. Um, I'm just showing you a sales page draft so I can show you the place where I'm hoping I, 
Yeah, see, so at the bottom, I say everything included for $100 pre launch until November 20th, enroll for $175. And the PayPal button goes to the course purchase page. But at the point before November 23rd, when they go there, the price is $75. Okay. And then after November 23rd, I change, I edit the PayPal button so the price is $100. That's all I do. And then I, I take out the word pre launch from the product name. Okay. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that seems so much easier. Yeah, and then and then in my in my Facebook post, when I make a text only post also to sell the thing, I also say, hey, regular price after number 2030 is 100 pre launch rate is available now see this is the email link email quote unquote email link. It's the link I put it on on Facebook and people just I can sell with a PayPal button on Facebook or anywhere else. Just using the link. Wow. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, thanks.